welcome to another video from explainingthefuture.com and to my second report from a London 2015 3D print show. Last time I gave you a quick overview of the whole show and so this time I'm going to focus on those particular innovations that have most caught my attention. The 3D print show is a great place to see new 3D printers. For example, here on the Ultimaker stand we have not just the well-established Ultimaker 2, but also its recent cousins, the Ultimaker 2 Extended and the Ultimaker 2 Go. As you can see, the Ultimaker 2 Extended is significantly taller than previous Ultimakers, while the Ultimaker 2 Go is a compact desktop 3D printer that even comes with a travel case. Talking of portability, Be Very Creative have a new model with an integrated battery which allows the printer to be unplugged from the mains and moved around during printing. While battery life is currently only 5 minutes, this still permits the printer to be relocated after a print job has started. Definitely not easy to move is the Big Rep 1. With its 1.3 cubic metre build volume, this is in fact the largest production 3D printer for the material extrusion of thermoplastics. Some are now predicting a local manufacturing revolution in which products will be made on demand in micro factories. And when you can see the big rep while in operation, such predictions seem all the more realistic. This is, after all, a 3D printer that can already make a piece of furniture like this occasional table. Not that far away, PrinterBot are displaying their new PrinterBot Play. At $399, this is excellent value and would allow many more people to own a personal 3D printer. Until just over a year ago, all PrinterBots had plywood bodies, with the first metal PrinterBot being the simple that we saw at last year's 3D print show. But now, along with the PrinterBot Play and the simple, even the PrinterBot Plus has a powdered aluminium casing. By print head count, the company with the largest display is the relatively new Rapid 3D. On show, they have a Light 100, Light 200, and Light 200X models, plus an even larger Light 500, and prototypes for even more designs. All of the Rapid 3D hardware has a fantastic build quality. The larger models feature an integrated screen and even the smaller Light 100 includes an SD card slot for untethered operation once a printer's started. I also really like the filament holder manufactured in the same aircraft grade aluminium and I'm certain that Rapid 3D is a company to watch. While all of the printers I've mentioned so far are single extruder only, an increasing number of models can print in two or more materials at once. Of these, I found the Sigma from BCN 3D Technologies particularly impressive, as it has two fully independent extruders, each fed with a separate filament. Moving to printers that solidify a photocurable resin, on the Formlab stand we find the popular Form 1 Plus. This is a very good value stereolithographic printer, and can make highly accurate prints such as this investment casting master. The Form 1 Plus can now also print from a widening range of photopolymers, including white, black, grey and clear resins, and even this flexible material. Competition for the Form 1 Plus comes from a new ShareBot Voyager. This DL pre-projection printer is fascinating to watch in operation, and is again suited to making highly accurate printouts, including casting masters. In addition to 3D printer manufacturers, a great many filament vendors have stands at the print show. These include eSun from China, who have a very wide range of filaments, Fiberforce from Italy, and the recently launched Rigid Ink from the UK. There's also Filamentum from the Czech Republic, who are displaying these fantastic 3D printed speakers made from their Timberfill product. New to the market, we also have Verbatim as the first big brand to start selling 3D printing consumables. Verbatim is part of a Mitsubishi chemical holdings group, one of the world's leading manufacturers of plastics. It really is very significant to see such a mainstream conglomerate offering 3D printing products. 
Lastly, we have Purement, which is the world's first antibacterial 3D printing filament. Due to their layered construction, even with thorough washing, it's often not possible to keep 3D prints germ-free. But Purement is a certified, eco-friendly antibacterial that produces 3D prints that are far less appealing to germs. It's therefore an important innovation for the production of safer 3D printed toys, as well as kitchen and bathroom items. Once again I've enjoyed my visit to the London 3D print show. As usual, I've seen lots of new 3D printers that I hadn't experienced before, as well as loads of other 3D printing innovations. More information on 3D printing can be found in my 3D printing books, as well as on explainingthefuture.com. But now that's it for another video, and I hope to talk to you again very soon.